Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to a regularly scheduled meeting of the Penfield Zoning Board of Appeals. Tonight's meeting is going to take place in two parts. The first part will be our public hearings. We will ask the applicant to come up to the podium uh, and give us uh, his or her name and address, and then explain to the board members why the relief being requested uh, should be granted. Once the applicant is done with the presentation, board members will very likely have questions of the applicant. And then we'll ask anyone in the audience that cares to come up and speak about uh, the application to come up and give also name and address and go ahead and talk about the application. After the public hearings are adjourned, we will take a brief recess and we'll reconvene in the back of the room to deliberate on tonight's applications and also to take care of any other business that the board may, ha may have. Uh, members of the public are certainly welcome at both sessions, the public hearing as well as the deliberation. Although during deliberation, the time is generally reserved for conversations amongst board members, board members with staff, and sometimes with our council. Occasionally, we have a further question for clarification or something of the applicant or of some citizen that had a concern, uh, but we really try to keep that uh, to a minimum. Uh, as I said, members of the public are welcome at both. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to stay. <laughs> By any means, uh, if you are interested in finding out what happened to a particular application and you had to leave, you could call uh, staff tomorrow and find out uh, what action, if any, the board took on a particular item. Every month I point out that the town, uh, in order to make sure that its citizens are fully apprised of their right to come in and talk about applications, make sure that those citizens get notification of our meeting agenda. Uh, and they do that by requiring the applicants to put signs in the front yard, like for sale signs. We've all seen them driving around town. Um, have notice uh, via postcard to neighbors within a certain number of yards or feet of the application. Uh, post it on the internet, online, and as I like to say the old fashioned way, by putting it up on bulletin boards here. And we think that that's a good idea because uh, quite often we get a lot of people in to speak about applications. And, Really, we like that. We welcome that. And uh, that's, that's why things we think work so well. Uh, having said that, I'd ask everyone to rise and join me in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we, we do have... Um, Several applications that aren't going to be heard tonight. The first matter uh, is uh, being tabled at the request of the uh, applicant. Uh, the third matter and the fourth matter are both being withdrawn by the applicant. So we're actually going to start, I believe, with the one that is number two on the agenda. Correct. Thanks, Harold. Application number two, Bill Berta, The Home Depot, 750 Panorama Trail South, Rochester, New York, 14625. Request a special permit for outside storage display under Article 4-4-24 of the Code to allow storage and display of seasonal products at 750 Panorama Trail. The property is owned by Home Depot USA, Incorporated, and is owned GB. This is SBL number 138.08-1-41.1. This is application number 14Z-0008. <coughs> It's a little too curly. <laughs> uh, if you use the, if you raise it up a little bit higher and use the the, the clips that will hold on to over the top, and then the, those magnetic clips will will hold to the. You know what I'm saying? You can use the, the magnetic ones on the bottom. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Berta. I am the operations manager for Home Depot um, in uh, the town of Penfield. Um, I am back here after uh, two or three years um, applying for, um, reapplying for our application to renew our permit, uh, which the board has approved um, prior in prior years uh, for the approval of outside storage and display. Uh, the purpose of the display areas is to offer our customers the opportunity to view, uh, purchase, uh, 
seasonal items such as live goods, fencing, assembled seasonal items such as grills, mowers, snow throwers. Uh, the purpose of the storage areas is to ensure we are able to have job lot quantities of products for our customers uh, to complete their projects. Uh, it also provides an area to uh, temporarily store materials uh, that are recycled such as cardboard, plastics, and plant racking. Uh, both the storage and display areas help us improve safety standards in the store for our customers and our employees. Uh, in order to provide the service levels that our customers have come to expect, uh, we're looking uh, for ways to increase the holding capacity of our highest demand items uh, that our customers want. Uh, the display and storage areas allow, to pro allow us to provide that service to our, our customers. Um, I did provide a map, I believe, to everyone. Uh, in the initial application, this is basically uh, that same map blown up. Um, primarily what we're looking to do is just, um, if anyone's visited the site, this is exactly what we've already um, asked for over the past three years and has been approved. Um, we're looking for permanent storage, um, display tables for plants and uh, other items uh, across the front apron of the store. Um, this area, side area here where we generally have a couple sheds. Right now we also have a swing set. Uh, we would have lumber stored here on the side parking. Um, just small storage here for some uh, smaller lumber items and store use items uh, that would keep it free from Plaza Circle. Uh, this area here on our receiving dock, that would also be where we re keep some of our recyclable materials that get rotated out on a, a weekly basis. Um, this we are looking for to keep um, year-round, everything in the orange. Um, but even though we're asking for it, we're not necessarily using it year-round. Um, if anyone visited this store for, uh, in review of this application, some of these areas really aren't even being used at this point. The area I visited the, the store the other day to buy one of those rakes yes. to take the snow off my roof. Roof rake. Mm -hmm. And then I did what I usually do, procrastinate, and the snow melted. <laughs> so my go. plan worked. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the area in the blue is the area that we look to set up um, in the spring for our garden business. Um, primarily, this holds um, all of our garden area items, uh, soils, uh, plants, um, mulches, uh, things like that. Um, we are just looking to build that. We would store things there from March 1st through uh, July 31st, and then actually even before the July 31st timeline, we'll start to be reducing that um, as, as our need kind of slows down. Generally by 4th of July, um, things have kind of slowed down. We're able to start taking that down. But I just wanted to give us enough time and space there so that we're in compliance. And, um, outdoor storage where you keep on the um, pallets, do you keep just, uh, I guess, uh, um, inert things or do you keep uh, um, fertilizers, pesticides, things like that out there that are um, in the bags? For, uh, generally it's all soils. Um, fertilizers, no, that's... Uh, those are all kept uh, inside the building. Uh, it's really big, <coughs> bulky uh, items, you know, big bags of mulch, uh, some block, uh, cement blocks, things like that. Um, and uh, we do keep some rider mowers and things out there secured in the, in the block. So it, it's generally heavy commodity items. Uh, they aren't, they don't, pro uh, they really don't uh, propose that or have any hazmat uh, materials or anything like that. Okay. There being uh, safety issues in terms of the things kept outside, injuries? Uh, no, um, like I said, we've uh, been doing that. We've had this permit for the past three years. Um, it actually, we have not had any incidents of uh, injury. Uh, we strongly believe it helps make things a lot easier. Um, this area right in here, we're able to turn that into a kind of like a drive-through area uh, because uh, we're able to uh, process transactions out there on our phones as well as. Uh, customers who are maybe buying things inside, so it's, <coughs> it's much easier, especially we, we, we see with like some of our elderly customers. Um, instead of having to lift things up uh, inside, put them on a car, go out to their car and load them up, they're just able to pay in the store or go through our drive through and we're able to load it up right for them right then and there. So it really makes it a lot easier for our customers. Thanks. That's all I have. Yeah. Sure. Uh, didn't you come in to us one time for some kind of trucks? to be parked along the side? Um, we do have the Penske truck rental. Um, and when I was applying for this, and I think that's gonna need to be a separate application 
of yeah, that, that that's was a conditional, use. A conditional use permit not an outside storage display right. and and the conditions on that were are, are standard uh, uh, we didn't put any end date on it uh, only if there's any issues with the way it's being operated on the site and and I don't think we've had any I'm not aware of any, any comments any complaints or, negative yeah. uh, about the Penske operations right. that's out there yeah. that was a question I had are you requesting a specific length of time for this uh... for this uh, I know when we first when we were going through this over the past couple of years we I, I believe the board you suggested well let's let's end it at three years um, I really have not unless the board is aware of something we have gotten very few complaints uh, we get a lot of compliments on the ease of from our customers on the ease of them being able to use that drive through and and to purchase those items and having quantities that that, that they need um, I would request you know if we could make this a permanent or if, you know so that we can get this to just be yearly and we'll pay the the, the fee that we need to Harold, would you refresh my memory about the issue that we had up there with Plaza Circle? Was there an issue about control or snow plowing or something like that? The road, I think. Well, yeah. the town of Penfield owns the road. Okay, so what was the issue? Well, I think there 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 had been some some comments that had come. I'm not sure if it where they came from. That some of the uh, the, the tractor trailers that that come without the sides where they offload from 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 uh, forklifts were discharging the materials into Plaza Circle versus off the end. Once you get to where that island is there, Bill, if you can yeah. point out, uh, um, that, I, that's yeah. on their own property. I think what may have been happening is they were, they were using the circle itself to discharge some materials off of the flatbed trucks versus going formally onto their property and working off that area there. I think this area here is, is kind of that's Plaza Circle. That's, that's, that's the right that's of way. The, yeah. Right. Yeah. So what was happening, and I think what was brought up was the fact that uh, we were using this back area here uh, for some storage, and there was concern because this was a public access road um, that, you know, you had lumber here, um, and it was being staged there and kept there indefinitely that it pre created a, a hazard. Uh, that's why we came up with a solution of offering, of, of blocking off this parking here and putting that, uh, lumber there because it really it's putting into parking spaces that really aren't used um, you know we still left some spaces here primarily the people that do park here are generally parking here and then taking a stroll down uh, along the path right. um, but really our customers don't really generally park there um, so that's why we kind of came up with this area here to keep the lumber off of the plaza circle I just I, my memory it could be deja vu, but I'm wondering whether there was an issue that, that Home Depot, was Home Depot ever engaged in negotiations with the town about transferring ownership of that? I, I'm not sure. I, I think I, the I can board, answer that question, yeah. but the answer is yes. Okay. At one point in time, there were formal negotiations between Home Depot and the town of Penfield to uh, relinquish the ownership of Plaza Circle to Home Depot, and uh, those, th those activities came to an end. And uh, they didn't go forward. And then, as part of a revised application, they pursued the old bowling alley because originally the bowling alley, Panorama Bowl, wasn't part of this this project area. So they pursued the bowling alley, and they moved the the, the building closer and a little bit closer to Panorama Trail and and closer to, to the to the creek because they purchased the bowling alley property. But right above where you see Plaza Circle there. Those are lands that are also owned by Home Depot. The project, the property, wraps around Plaza Circle and goes up towards uh, Penfield Road, back behind. Uh, that, there's that store. There's a barber area. shop, and yeah. then there's a storage center over there. I guess I'd just ask you that if um, if there's still an interest in that, if you could encourage your, uh, you know, corporate to engage in, in the town in those negotiations. I, I thought there were. I don't know if they are, but. The, it, okay. Every once in a while, we, we get a call from some individual acting on behalf, and, and he's not a Home Depot representative. He's, he's one of the attorneys or, mm -hmm. or realtors, uh, brokers that, that inquire about it. And my understanding is it goes back up to Atlanta someplace, and, right. and it sort of dies. Yeah. It just makes sense if you own all the property around him, maybe you should own the road too. The, and the only other question I have is there, there was some reference to your in your letter here about storage of broken carts. That this small area here yeah. um, is where we put those. Um, oh, we have a service that comes out 
uh, every uh, once a quarter and they just service anything that's broken. Generally, there's no more than three to four carts back there. Okay, but the hope is that they'll be repaired and put back Yep, in they're yards. repaired, okay. and if they so are not just kind of sitting no, there. No, and if, if they can't be repaired, we then dispose of them. Okay, so. very good. Yep. Anyone in the audience care to speak about this application? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Application number five. John Reichert, 39 Black Watch Trail, Fairport, New York, 14450. Request an area variance, Article 3-3-35-D-3, of the code to allow a large existing barn than permitted at 1205 Shoecraft Road. The property is owned by John Reichert and is zoned RR-1. This is SBL number 094.01-1-43.1. This is application number 14Z-0011. Yeah, you got to use the clips on the top and the and the. Uh, nice to the, hear that, Harold. Huh? You were right. Yeah, you hear that often. <laughs> okay. My name is uh, John Reichert. I live at uh, 39 Black Watch Trail, Fairport. And uh, in. Uh, 1947, my parents bought this 21 acre parcel of land. Now this is green pine forest here. And they purchased this 21 acre parcel. And in 1984, after my mother passed away, we sold one acre, sold the home and kept the remaining property. And at this point, I'd like to be in a position to do something with this parcel of land here. And uh, I understand I'm not supposed to have the barn there. And I'm looking for permission from you people to put this barn on a one acre parcel and be able to do something with the remaining property. Uh, what is the age of the barn? I don't know. I know it was there in 1947. Okay, so we know it's at least 67 years old. Yes. Okay. Uh, what are the dimensions of it? About 20 feet by 30 feet. Do you have pictures of that barn? Yeah, I do, yes. Okay, does everybody have a picture of the barn? Mm -hmm. I think so. And how tall is this barn? <coughs> it's two stories. Yeah, but how, how many feet tall? I would guess uh, seven and probably 17 feet. That's a, that's a guess. 17 feet. Uh, our code only allows um, 15 feet. Um, is there a way you could take a couple feet off of it or off the second story or anything? Not very easily. Okay. And that's a guess, that's 17. I'd have to get out there with a tape measure. I just know the Ceiling's not real high on the first level. I'm guessing maybe seven feet and maybe 10 feet on the second floor. But if you really need an accurate number, I would have to uh, get that for you. Yeah, you'd have to do that because if this is allowed, you would probably need to have uh, also a variance on the height. So if you would, you know, measure it and let the staff know. It's gotta be pre-existing. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna say it's pre-existing. It's, I, and, and I'm not gonna argue with the 1947 date, but I, I think I saw some records that it was dated back to like 1920, the, the structure itself. So, I mean, it's... I can't speak to that. I just know it was yeah, there I, in 47. I, I, I took a look at the assessor records, and I, and I believe it was dated to 1920. But when you get that old into the records, a lot of times it was just an approximate date that they have in their records. Well, it's the likely pre-existing, but, but right. Pete, an issue may be does the uh, subdivision request... Um, come into play with whether it's pre-existing. In other words, does, it, does the subdivision request a, a really mandate us to get into the issue of the height? I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. As a tidbit of extra information, this home is shown on the map over in the town of Parenton, and there's an 1858 map 
of the county over there, and that building at home is on that map, and that's uh, there were shoe crafts living there. Hmm. So I don't know if that's the only building on that shoe craft road that was occupied by shoe crafts, but certainly some shoe crafts live there. Now, in this photo, I see that this barn sits up quite high on the foundation. Um, how high is that foundation? Is it just to the ground there? Does it go down a little bit? Or That's actually a block wall. It's probably, I'm guessing, two, three feet high. But the actual floor in that garage is basically straight in as you go in from the, uh, the driveway. Oh. It's unusual here with the so doors. The door or, goes below the, uh, it's why the doors go below, huh? Yes. Yeah, I've never seen before the doors below a building like that. It's interesting. Now you say the driveway. Uh, where is the driveway? It looks like there's all just grass. Well, it's a uh, many years ago it was dug out about six inches deep, and the uh, area that was dug out from Shoecraft Road in was filled in with cinders. They got some cinders from the armory, I think, on University Avenue and filled it in. And uh, basically, uh, it's cinders that have kind of been grown over by grass. Okay. Um, you want to just keep the one acre, right? I'd like to be in a position to be able to keep the barn on an acre of land and do something with the rest of it. Okay. Do you know what you're planning on doing with it, subdividing or? I would like, guess I'd like to work with somebody else on that. I'm not sure I'm the one that should be uh, jumping into uh, developing a subdivision. I don't know. But people have pointed out the fact that I'm not even supposed to have the barn there. Are there any other structures at all on, the, on all of the acres? No. Okay. Um, the building looks good. How long ago was it? Um, did it have the siding put on it? 25 years? 80s, mid to late 80s. And how old is the roof? About the same About age. About the same About age. mid 80s? Okay. And what are you storing in that barn? Well, we've got a pop up camper, some extra furniture on the second floor. Right now, there's a lawn tractor in there that I use to cut the grass and come. Uh, Summer, I'll put my snowblower in there and take the lawn tractor home to where I live. Are you planning on moving at any time to this acre? Probably not. Well, now, for a structure that's this large, our code says you would need five acres. So you only have the one acre. Well, I'd like permission to leave it on one acre, yes. Have you considered... Um, Adding to that one acre, even if you didn't get up to five acres? Well, basically, I would like to be able to just leave the barn on an acre. I mean, if something's going to happen to the rest of this property, uh, I'm not sure about leaving the barn on a three or four acre parcel. Um, they're all good questions, but. Um, on a one acre, you're actually only allowed 250 square feet. So, you know, you're over double the square feet that anyone else would be allowed or what the code allows. You understand that? Um, do you meet all of the, obviously, must, do you meet all of the setbacks? Let me ask you that for the record. Um, the front would be 50 feet, the side would be 10 feet, and the rear would be 30 feet. The uh, front right so, now from the right away of the road is 82 feet and the setback on the north is 54 feet. So you would even meet that uh, on even if you had five acres then the setbacks change you would need 50 feet on all of the sides so you would still meet that? Correct. Okay. Um, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, I just, if we allowed this, okay, you're probably not going to be there as long as the barn is going to be there. So then you got, I just question the marketability of a one-acre parcel with a barn on it. 
I mean, <laughs> it's it's an odd situation. You're not. There's no there's no property that you own that's adjacent that you that you're living on. In other words, the person that would be using it would have to come from elsewhere, like your situation. Um, yes, sir. How would you see that happening? How would you you know how would this thing be marketed to somebody? I don't know. I really haven't given that any thought. Uh, it's an acre of land. Uh, I suppose it might be saleable for a building lot. Uh, probably the barn would have to come down because it's also pretty smack in the middle of it. Yes. Okay. This whole thing popped up really by surprise when I started talking to people about the property. And then it was explained to me that uh, I couldn't even have the barn there unless I had a residence there, which was a bit of a surprise. So I thought the best thing to do would be to come in and talk to you people and find out if I could basically get permission to just leave it as it is. And I can measure the height of that. Oh. I'll be happy to do that. Think uh, in any way, if we were to grant the application, that it uh, would have any uh, effect on the character of the neighborhood? I can't see how. I mean, basically, it looks like it belongs. And it's been there for, as we've said, a number of years. Yes. Have you I ever... can speak to 47. Mr. Moorhead has uh, said perhaps longer than that. Okay. Do you know if any other? Uh, sheds of that size or close to that size or barns in the in that general vicinity i know when this parcel was originally purchased there was 100 acres of land available this one this one uh gravels bought this and then a gentleman by the name of ray westfall bought the remaining 100 acres um when they build a house here they also had a barn here and they have since subdivided off an acre here, and they have the house and the barn on one acre. You gave them permission for that a few years ago. That's important. That's good to know. But again, that was with a, a home. A house. So this is a horse of a slightly different color. And another thing to think about is if you subdivide <coughs> and you have a, a development there of homes, then you'll have just that one barn sitting out there with you know, no home with it, just a barn. That's that true. That might, you know. That's true. You have a thing on the uh, character of the neighborhood. That's true. But we've gotten used to using that for storage, and I did a little research to find out what it would cost to come up with that much storage room and be uh, fairly expensive. We've just used this thing for years and years and years, and I'd like to be able to continue to use it. In your own home, do you have... Um a shed or a garage or what do you have in Fairport where you live? I've got a typical center entrance colonial with a two-car garage. Which and you have no room there to store uh, your not camper Not without building or something. And how would you feel about that, like building something to put your camper in or whatever? Or keeping it in your side I or couldn't backyard? build that there. It's on a typical half-acre lot, and I think I'm limited to 200 square feet in Parenton. You said the square footage for a shed here is how many? Well, it depends on how large your property is. Okay. Well, I'm on a half acre and pretty sure I'm limited to uh, 200 square feet. Again, I don't want to be a dead horse, but I just thought maybe you should consider uh, the advisability of, of including a little more land than an acre to allow somebody to potentially build a structure on their uh, residence along with the barn. I mean, if we were to grant it, then then leave it just enough acres to to have a barn on. It would, it, cut, it, down, it would cut it down on the amount that you'd have available to sell, but it might be worth it in the long run. Maybe not for you, but for your your heirs to have a situation where somebody could build on that lot and leave the barn in place. And if you wanted time to consult with somebody about that, that seems like a wise point. You know, we'd be glad to, if, if you like, we'd be glad to table this and have you come back and give us information in that regard. It's up to you. Well, I guess at this point, I'd like to know if I can just okay, get permission enough. to leave that on an acre. And... Right, fair enough. Okay. Yep. Anyone in the audience care to speak about this? Come on up. Hi. 
I'm Scott Meckler. I live at 1194 Shoecraft Road. Um, I have a few concerns about this, and I'm not sure I have all the facts right because I just very recently found out about this because yeah, I guess there was a problem with all the postcards sent out about this application that for some reason they were returned or many people didn't get them. I'm not, not sure what the story was on that, but anyways, my point with this proposal is I own almost across the street from this, and when I bought my property, I wanted to put up a small structure because I put in a pond, and I was working on the property for years before I actually built the house, and at that time, the town told me I could not have any building on a piece of property that did not have a house on it first. <clears throat> and I believe the people just down the road, almost kitty corner to this property, had the same issue about last year with an old farmhouse there that they bought. They wanted to sell the farmhouse, keep the land, and put a barn behind the house. And I believe that they were told that they weren't, couldn't do that either. So they since kept the house and built a barn behind it. And also, if this does get approved, I wondered how it would be taxed, if it's going to be taxed just at a rate of a, a vacant lot or if there would actually be some value put to the barn, an extra tax put on that. I think that's it. Thank you. Question. Well, presumably, it's, it's an improvement, so it's taxed now, is it? I, I, would, some manner, I would presume there's the there's assessment. some additional value added to sure. to the to the property outside of what the raw land uh, what's would. It, is the it tax now? Uh, yeah. Is it approved lot? You pay for an approved lot, yes. Sure. According to sure. the tax. Right. Yeah, and that and that wouldn't change. That wouldn't change would well. Did you, did you want a, a chance to uh, address any of those concerns or uh, it's up to you? I don't think so. Uh Okay. That gentleman's got a very nice home he built. I think yours is the one with the, where'd he go? Yours is the one they cross the street where the end of Kraft's property. Yeah. You know, got a very nice home over there. And Anyone else in the audience? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Application number six, Edwin, Edwin Summerhays. 2509 Broncroft Boulevard, Rochester, New York, 14625, on behalf of UG, requests area variance from Article 3-3-68-B and Article 3-3-68-C of the code to allow the construction of an office with more lot coverage and less setback at 2100 Penfield Road. The property is owned by Anita and, and Bernard Marvin and is owned BNR. This is SBL number 139.08-1-61. This is application number 14Z-0012. Only one problem with those uh, clips that high, huh, Ed? Oh. <laughs> I had to put on my lifters tonight. <laughs> well, you did come in the other day and say you needed some abuse. <laughs> I, I appreciate it, thanks. I was actually going to give... Dan some abuse earlier when Home Depot was here and he's you talked about purchasing the roof rake and then the yeah. snow melted I I was waiting for you to ask if you could return it and then oh, you know, <laughs> I've never done anything like that <laughs> uh, we're in an area here on on Penfield Road across from uh, uh, across from Wegmans and there's a number of lots in this area on the west side of uh, Harris Whalen Park that uh, has been rezoned from a residential property to a, a business non-residential or non-retail and uh, and I believe this might be one of the first ones if not the first one on the west side of uh, Harris Whalen where my client you who I told her don't worry there's plenty of people ahead of us don't worry about getting here till 8 uh, so she is Better she stretch. was planning yeah, on uh, coming out, but uh, she only lives across the street. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, oh, I didn't know that. So she could walk. Maybe she's watching. Yeah. <laughs> she's, so hi you. Um, so anyway, uh, so she's she she would like to put up a dentist office here, and um, I understand. I didn't write it down when she answered the question to the planning board last week. I think she's going to have about four employees plus herself, and. Uh, in order to accommodate the size uh, of the building that she wants, 
and in order to accommodate the this the required number of parking spaces for this size dwelling or building um, I've had to expand it out beyond the uh, what the current zoning setbacks are for this for this district uh, with that in mind though I also would point out that the uh, the house and I believe I have addressed this in a letter to you uh, the house to the west of us is a little bit closer than a 50 foot setback uh, I think it was 47 which comes to mind and the house to the east of us instead of being on a 20 foot setback I believe is on about a 17 or 18 foot setback again I I think I addressed that in my letter to you so uh, I believe that what we're talking about here as far as the the request for the for the setback variances is is not a significant number in size that it uh, when you look at the the building in relationship to the adjacent buildings it's it's not it's not terribly offensive uh, as a matter of fact because of the overhang on the front of the building I'm at, I think at 37 feet or 36 feet uh, but if I take my setback measurement to the main wall of the front of the building, it's 40 feet. <clears throat> as far as the um, the lot coverage, uh, the goal or the, the code calls for a 65% lot coverage. And again, this is an unusual situation that the town's uh, goal is to provide on the north, along the nor that north property line, a future a private drive <clears throat> that would uh, access all the future as this as this neighborhood transitions all the future businesses along here would would access the property through a common private drive along the north or near the north property line and so once again in order to accommodate that private drive <clears throat> and the parking and and the, you know that pushes it forward but that also with the private drive the parking lot and everything else I think I'm at about a 67 or 66 percent lot coverage right now when uh, down the road when the this this whole area has been transitioned and uh, we the we have access down now via that private drive over to Harris Whalen Park uh, <clears throat> we can eliminate the driveway access to Penfield Road in the front and that will get rid of enough blacktop so that once we maintain once we reach that goal we'll be back down to a 64 percent lot coverage so we're within the area so I'd like to think that that one is very minor in, in nature and it will be remedied as time passes and that the primary issues uh, uh, for our variance and request tonight is before that, you leave that that discussion uh, you, you mentioned that you'll be able to eliminate that access point is, is is that what the town engineer and state DOT has has told you that they would probably happen is that that curb cut and, and the will will disappear okay. yes because I know that it is a coordinated effort to provide some type <clears throat> of an access right in right out along that little strip along with that access along the back but I didn't know if this particular lot was part of that discussion for the future yes it is yes yes it well, is. as far as eliminating or keeping the, the the access to Penfield Road when they have access to Harris Whalen Road and everything will I, all future customers will be coming in through the private drive to the rear the Penfield Road uh, access will be eliminated uh, and this is really coming from from the town I, I'm I don't know when this town resolution was made I'm not sure what discussions uh, went on with the state at, at that time for the state but yeah, I, the, I can't the, imagine the state not wanting to eliminate a curb cut right that's always one of their goals but obviously there's there's usually some some efforts to allow for some minimal amounts of traffic coming <coughs> onto these types of properties from Penfield Road versus going all through the back of, of the, the areas. My, it's, it's very similar to what is going on on the, the west or the east side of, of Harris Wall Park Road. Uh, that was that was a rezoning application. It was in the late 80s, and you see where we are right now. 
Yeah, I'm trying to. We're still not to the point yeah, where we have an access road. I, I figure this is going to take a while. Right, uh, and, and that's, that's the expectation. You know, we, We're not looking at something's going to happen, you know, in a couple of weeks or months. It's probably multiple years. Yeah, uh, but my understanding is that this this front access, the curb cut to Penfield Road, will be eliminated. Well, then, that's okay. that's, that's right. the way I've been was my understanding, and in the site plan that I uh, plan on preparing assuming that we make progress here tonight um that uh, i have i've held off from preparing a site plan because of the costs involved in preparing a full site plan um but assuming that we proceed then in the site plan that i prepare uh we'll be men noting that these as, as a matter of fact as part of this application as far as this uh zoning request is made i have specifically said that once once this curb cut is changed or removed uh we we can eliminate the lot coverage issue so it is part of this application um so let me see uh so and that was you know because of the parking or the drive in the back that also helps you know it's pushing this lot the, this building farther forward if we didn't have to accommodate that private driveway we could be matching our front setbacks but so with that i um oh, unlo well, unless I, I i did have my reasons my five reasons for justification which you have on record i i think i've tried to cover them but you're all set i'll just go for answer any questions yeah if you didn't have to have the proposed road across the back if you, if you didn't have to accommodate it for that could you have replanned the house or the, or the actual structure to not have to have the setback to the west Oh, to the west? Because that's where the setback you need for that. Uh, on, on the west, it would have been a little bit more difficult. Uh, <laughs> if I squeeze things up, again, I like to separate in and out traffic uh, from, uh, yeah, in and, I, I, I want to separate the in and out traffic over on the east side of the building. I like to keep, a, a, you know, a reasonable s amount of space between the driveway and the adjacent property on the west. I also like to separate, keep a separation between the in and out traffic and the, and the sidewalk that will be along the building. So I'm, I'm trying to keep away from the neighbors and keeping the pedestrians away from the road traffic. I could squeeze it there, but I think it would be a sacrifice to the safety of pedestrians and a little, in, little more of an encroachment than what we are uh, with a neighbor, especially to the east where I have about probably about four or five feet there, four, three or four feet. I forget how often. Um, one more. In terms of the size of the building, was that based on the number of dentists? Are, is, is it one dentist and then, uh, and then hygienists and assistants? Or? I, yeah, I think, yes, Cause, it I is. Mean, looking at the plans, the, I mean, my big concern was I saw there's four operating rooms for one dentist. I don't know if that's a design standard that's, that's, that's required nowadays, or if you could have gotten by with three operating rooms and save that square footage and make it a slightly smaller building. Because I, you know, I look at my dentist and there's two dentists practicing there and they have the exact same number of rooms and that's been going now for almost 20 years now. So that's, I'm just curious in terms of the yeah, size. I, I apologize, that's where I was hoping that, you know, it's nice to have you here to answer those questions. Um, and this, that question came up last week and she came up to the podium and I stood off so I didn't take notes but I I could have sworn she said that she was going to have four employees and plus herself and I forget you know I'd have to go back to those minutes to see what she said if as far as secretarial staff or something like that uh, but I thought she was only going to have four or five patients in there at a time um, I think when you looked at that plans there was about five or six five or six upper there were four operating rooms across the uh, north side, yeah. Four. Okay, yeah. and I thought there was two on the and east two on side. The east, or two on the west. Or two on the west, yeah. yeah. So I thought she had six total, but I thought she was only talking about four employees. Okay. Uh, but, uh, and the, the parking matches not necessarily the, the number of employees and, and customers she has, but the, the parking matches what the requirements are for the zoning code. The, That's all I have. One question: Are we likely to see other applications similar to this with these? And this can't be that much smaller a lot than than the rest of the lots on there. 
a net I, stretch? I, I think it is, I think it is going to be a trend, and I think that there will be, uh, as other applications come in, and depending on the type of business it is, um, I know I'm also going to be working with another one down on the other side for some eye doctors, and I think they have the same issues, and I think it's a matter of time before either I or they come before you on that one. So I think it is going to be quite a bit. I, and especially, I think one of the big issues that's, that's going to bring a lot of people before you is going to be this private drive along the back. It's a great idea to eliminate, you know, the, the, the curb cuts out front. I mean, 441 is, is naturally a very busy road. And so if this can div divert these projects and these businesses that are going to be developing in this area are coming in from the back, it's, it's going to be helpful. But what it might do is, is push the improvements forward. So I think the front setback goal is going to be a very common So I mean, if, they, if the town really wants to promote that rear entrance, a rear roadway, then, you know, they, maybe they should consider doing something with this. Well, right. the, the, the resolution did grant some relief from the standard front setback requirements, which would be 80 feet. And the resolution allowed for a 50-foot setback, uh, but in this particular case, they're they're looking to go even further just to accommodate the, the parking needs that need to be addressed here. Yeah, and I, I and I did, as a matter of fact, I I've worked on a number of concepts for for you on this, and uh, the the first couple of ones I did, I I squeezed up the the uh, I, I kept the parking spaces the same size, but the drive lane between car parking space I, I kind of squeeze that up to to get some uh, to get some relief there but when I brought came in and talked to staff and uh, they were pretty opposed to shortening up the 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 driving space you know you there are more issues with the people driving you want to give them the, the room to maneuver their cars back and forth rather than squeezing that up so I think from the staff point that's why I said, all right, we'll go back to what is the design standard for a, a drive space and parking area and move the, for, the building forward. Anything else from the board? Anyone in the audience care to speak on this? Okay. Is this a one-story building? One building? Uh, we need you to, I'm sorry, we need you to here? come up. Yeah, we do, unfortunately. <laughs> Hugh was here, she might be able to answer your question. No, actually, they had all these people that didn't show up tonight, so we got moved ahead. Oh, okay. oh no, please, please. Well, actually, I can, her question was, in case you didn't hear, was what was the, uh, one, story, what was the story. one story? And I know I have it here, we have a rendering, here it is. And I'll post this up, it's a one story building. If I can reach it. I'll, I'll put it on this side so you can see. Well, that one, you don't have to put over to the top. So that's a, a rendering. It's a, a one-story one story building. And he asked again, he, uh, and I, I, I was standing behind you, the number of people you're going to have working with you, and it, could you come and address that? Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yuji. I'm a dentist at, uh, in Penfield. Uh, so what was the question exactly? Uh, the question was how many dentists, how many hygiene, you know, how many actual, you know, medical doctors will be doing, you know, using the operating rooms in a sense or? Um, at full capacity, which is probably going to be a few years from now, um, at most we'll have two dentists and two hygienists working at the same time. So we plan to have six operatories. Um, so potentially at full capacity, we could have six people in the chairs, um, two hygienists working, two dentists working, and two receptionists working. Does that answer your question? Yep, yeah, I was just, it, it was more need because, you know, I saw there was only one office for, you know, basically, a, you know, a desk and chair. I figured, okay, maybe one dentist and why so large for just one person? And The size all. of the office? Yeah, yeah, the no, just office? the size of the building in terms of the number of rooms oh. to be used. It seemed a lot for one dentist. Right, right, but... So um, it's more for the future in terms of having right, more people. Right, right, okay. yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem. You, you got Any further questions? <clears throat> no. You sure? Okay. Uh, anyone else in the audience? <clears throat> and for no further board questions, okay, thank you very much. Your timing is perfect.
Thank you. He couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> <laughs> You're all hanging on. Yeah. Application number seven. Chris Santola, Cossage Engineering, 217 Lake Avenue, Rochester, New York, 14608. On behalf of Cadoba Mexican Grill Restaurant, request an area variance from Article 4-4-11 of the Code to allow the construction of a restaurant with less parking and a special permit for signage under Article 7-7-3 from Article 7-7-12-D and E <coughs> and Article 7-7-13-C of the code to allow more than one freestanding sign with less setback and more than one building mount sign at 1867 Empire Boulevard. The property is owned by Edward Keller Jr. and Penfield Keller LLC and is zoned GB. This is SBL number 093.11-1-35. This is application number 14Z-0013. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to thank the board for uh, letting us present again. Uh, you may have remembered we were before this board last month, and at that point in time, we thought that was all the variances we need. Uh, unfortunately, there was a miscommunication between the civil, the site engineer, the architect, and developer. And uh, what happened was, as I was uh, developing the plans originally, we came up with the maximum amount of spaces that the site could be designed with, which was 44. And as I counted the number of round seats on the, uh, the original plans, there were 44. It didn't take into account the, the bench seats that are a part of the restaurant as well. So we're, uh, you know, Qdoba needs 61 seats to make this a viable uh, location uh, for their uh, business plan. And uh, what we're really asking for is that uh, with it developed uh, based on 61 seats with the parking we have, we have a ratio of approximately 1.1 spaces per two seats, which is, although less than the town code, it does meet and actually uh, exceeds the standard of the Monroe County Parking Study, which recommends uh, uh, basically one parking space per two seats. And while uh, we know what the town code currently says, and with discussions with the, uh, the planning staff, they, uh, they feel strongly that uh, at least for a restaurant like this, the parking is excessive and they plan to, at a future date, uh, push for a, a less stringent parking requirement for that. And uh, at the end of the day, honestly, we, you know, we don't believe it's a detriment to the town to, to grant this variance. We, we understand you know, how important it is and we've already asked the board for some variances and uh, you know, we respect the fact that you're allowing us to appear tonight and like I said, we believe it's uh, a minor uh, and coupled with the fact that the planning board and planning staff believes it's a, a worthwhile project, we, we are asking for that uh, variance tonight. Okay, did you want to address the signs too? Sure. Currently we're allowed uh, one pylon sign which would be up here and uh, we were thinking, and after talking to Mr. Morehouse as well. Is it up? It's okay, I can. That's okay, I can stretch. It just takes a second. The other pylon sign would be located over here to, uh, to make the uh, entrance way more visible. Uh, just as a as we're going in for the additional variance, it made sense to ask for it just in case Qdoba feels it's necessary to assist people coming from uh, north along uh, Bay Road. And then the uh, other pylon sign is an existing one. Well, that existing location there. And then uh, that's basically the signage uh, variances that we need. We're asking for two building mounting. Mounted signs. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. On the on the on the on the sign as well. We're allowed by code uh, two, which would be well, one was right there, and the pylon. What we're asking for is another one on uh, the Bay Road side, because it is a uh, triangular parcel to maximize the visibility both from Empire and Bay. We'd like uh, on the two sides there for corner. Uh, the total square footage does not exceed what is allowable for the site 
even with the additional variances for the additional signs, it is still below the uh, the maximum square footage, the 400 square foot maximum allowed. Um, are you all set? Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, are there any other on the parking issue? Are there any other uh, safe locations that you could try to uh, use for parking to uh, reduce reduce the need for the variance uh, at all? And I'm talking about specifically any uh, any areas you can rent from an adjacent owner to perhaps have your employees park. Because it's a pretty significant variance, and you know what we don't want is, you know, there's a restaurant down the road, uh, Italian restaurant, La Bella Vita, I think it's called. Whatever, uh, somebody can correct me. Mm -hmm. Great restaurant, doing very well, but boy, oh boy, there, are, it's <clears throat> it's tough to get in and out there. So I'm just wondering if we can, at least consider, trying to get some spots from a, uh, a you know a neighbor. Good evening. Uh, my name is Matt Lester. I'm uh, the broker for uh, the landlord and uh, project manager. Um, to answer your question, we did. That was our first alternative to the variance request. We went to uh, Ray Justice's property, who owns the laser car wash, um, to the northeast, uh, adjacent to the site. We also went to Wegmans. Um, neither party was willing or able to lease us spaces um, on a permanent or temporary basis. So we went down as many avenues as we could. The last thing we wanted to do was come back and uh, and have a variance. Just as a side note, the operator does not need, um, they're not asking for, they're very adequate with the number spa of spaces on site. So they're 100% able to function with the number of spaces that are on the property, um, just simply to meet the town, um, you know, code. And why is that? Why, why do they, they, they the... turn over quickly. So okay. um, you have a car in, they're very proud of how fast they serve and get people in and out. Yeah. And that, that one space can turn over, you know, several cars per hour. So you don't have a build up like you might at a full service sit down restaurant like the Bella Vita. Um, we don't have wait staff. You go up, you order, you grab your food, you sit down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't, that I didn't realize. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so. that does, uh, that allows for quicker turnover. Yep. Okay. And, uh, now, on the, on the other issue, wh where are the entrances? Where will be the entrances to the restaurant or entrance? You talk about parking or the front door of the, the building? Not the front door for cars. Okay. Long Empire, it's right here. Yeah. And then along Bay, there's that existing driveway access, which... Uh, Qdoba has purchased from Wegmans, so they will be the owner of it, and Wegmans and the bank have a irreversible access, in ingress, egress uh, easement to use it as well. So we got up here and over there. Okay, so I guess I could see the need to have some sort of sign um, so people know where to turn in and, and turn out, um, but... Why don't you run over again the, the need for the two building mounted signs? Well, the two building mounted signs we feel is important because uh, one is on the, on the front. The front door is over here, so we believe it's important to have the signage along Empire, especially uh, because of the, the traffic you have here, but also on this side because it really does have two fronts. I know it. It, it's got four sides, but it really does have two fronts because it does face bay. And then if, as you're coming up Empire, it also allows you to see it from up there as well, as far as the two building mounted signs. So we believe it covers this area, especially if you're coming, if you don't live in Penfield and you're coming to the restaurant, that'll help guide them in a little while. And, then, okay. and as far as size goes, they're... I, I, the number exceeds the. Uh, oh the yeah, you're well within it. I, I don't. I don't worry about that at all. Do you, Do you have any idea? Add to that? Sure. sure. Just add to that? Yeah. Just as a as a quick aside, the we actually were considering because this is such a prominent, you know, it's kind of like the Statue of Liberty. It's visible from every direction. Wegman's parking lot, Bay Road, um, you name it. So we actually were considering going in for, you know, we would love to have four sides signage. Um, on the building, we wanted to tone that down as much as we could. Two sides is actually uh, what we felt to the most trafficked roads would, would be adequate. Um, the other thing to consider 
is that there isn't a Qdoba in Monroe County. There isn't one in upstate New York. No one knows what it is. Um, so we're trying to create a little bit of, you know, uh, an awareness of who we are and, you know, All right. get well, the that's, signage Well, that's out. a candid uh, statement, and we yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you know how many building-mounted signs the mobile had by um, any chance? I think they, and I have the past building plan, uh, which was showed the signage just from memory. I think they had two. Um, one facing um, uh, uh, Bay and one facing uh, Empire, uh, if, but, but if, uh, I need to look back okay, at the Okay, and I don't know if they had one on a canopy or not. And on the canopy. Okay. They had the on the run. Yeah, on uh, the mobile on the run. On sure, the run. I remember that. The um, mobile on the canopy. And then right. years ago, I don't know how many, um, but there was like a fast food Italian restaurant there, right? The Fazulis or whatever it was called. Well, that that's in the location that's that's currently uh, utilized. Bank is it M&T Bank? That's bank. What, was it yeah. the bank now? Yeah, so that was did Fazulis? Do, do we know if Fazulis had two? Uh, I know it's a long time ago, Harold, but I'm just what I'm looking <laughs> yeah, for I, is some consistency here. That's all. Yeah, I, I believe, and I'd have to reference what's there now, but um, some of the other bank branches in the area and the Brugers have multiple signs, not just one, on the on the building. I'd have to go back. Okay. I know there's a, what is it, Verizon down the road a little bit in the Sunrise Plaza that has yeah, they're sort in, of they're, a pointed, yeah, they're uh, in we a gave two to that one. in that old, uh, uh, the old repair shop area at the end yep. of that building. Okay. Uh, well, there is, uh, I don't have it here, I think I left that on the table of, in the back, but I know that we do have a letter of support from the planning board for the parking variance. Uh, the, the memo is silent on the, on the sign request, but that's, you know, that's typical. Mike, you got some questions? Yeah, no, I just had one question. Um, the, the monument sign on, that you want on Bay, couldn't you accomplish the same thing with the directional sign? We, we could. We just thought it was while we were asking, get it up high and so everyone can see because it is uh, essentially, instead of having another building mounted sign over here, this kind of would equal that as far as visibility versus just a directional sign. But, you know, if that's what the, the board determines, you know, that they want as a limit, we would, we would you know, obviously thank you for that. I just wonder how much that entrance off of uh, Empire is going to be going to be uh, used for left-hand turns anyway. Right-hand turns it'll be. Okay. I mean, you know, uh, I probably said it before. I, I live right around the corner. I drive by that four or five times a day. I think if you with a restaurant going there, it's going to be more frequent probably. I think if if probably you're familiar with the area, <laughs> you'll use the Bay Road uh, access. Oh, yeah. Or yeah. like anybody else, you'll probably go down if you really feel bad or. Un unsure of it you'll go on the signalized entrance with with Wegmans yeah. I mean I mean if you're familiar with the area if you're not you may get you know like you said uh, a, a you know a little more time trying to get it left out of there but uh, Chris the, the reason for the monument sign on Bay is only because this is it's been you know kind of a, it's an assemblage so now the parcel is actually including that access road and furthermore we're trying to we're trying to make it easier for the customer to make the left in here rather than at the traffic light. Um, it just is a safer mo movement in our opinion. Um, and then that would also require them to make an additional left off of Empire. So we're just trying to mitigate two lefts versus one. Um, and the signage will really kind of help draw people in uh, before the site, and before the intersection rather than kind of a after the fact type movement. Any other questions from the board? Anyone in the audience? Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, I think that's, that's that was the, end the agenda, last, yes. last hearing, so the hearings will be adjourned. We'll take a brief recess and reconvene in the back. Thank you all very much. <laughs>